Today, we're looking at Robert Oster's NG Special. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, Robert Oster's NG Special is an orange ink, one of my favorite colors. To make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I put the ink into a different pen for a day. I then put it into a Pilot Metropolitan with a medium nib to take my notes for this video. Now, before we look at the writing samples, let's look at the sciencey bits. Up first is the chromatography. And I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see this kind of pinky peach color across the bottom. It moves up and we start to see some orange and you see bits of yellow coming out. And I think it's this range of colors of what we're seeing. It's that peachy pink color that really makes this a very nice ink. Now the one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. Now that pink, peachy pink color is a bit darker. The orange is a little lighter. And the yellow at the top is a little more pronounced. But otherwise, you might not be able to tell that that was a chromatography that was allowed to dry. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page. And more importantly, how hard it is to clean from your pens. I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it handles it very well. It doesn't blow out all over the place. It doesn't become unreadable. And that extra fine is only about a, a fine. So it does really well. The biggest thing that I run into is it's a brighter ink. So highlighting over it could create its own problems. Water is reactivating and completely lifting the ink off the page. We do start to see the beginnings of the white of the paper coming through and we easily see the dots of the Rhodia dot pad making its way. Pen flush does everything that water does. Just a little bit more, but I really think it's only water that would be needed to get this out of your pen. Bleach as would be expected, completely obliterates it, takes it off the page, but you should not need a one-third bleach solution to get this ink out of your pen. For the inks I've tested, I have found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Robert Oster's NG Special has a viscosity of 1.98, making it a wetter ink. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done with the extra fine and medium nib on Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. For the inks I've tested, I have found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Robert Oster's NG Special has an average dry time of 18 seconds, making it normal now from being a wet ink. Now let's look at the writing samples. I picked this ink up in sample form and to keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. We get no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo sheen, and the shade is fantastic here. We get really dark areas and really light areas all in the same word like in Robert. In Oster the E gets very light, super nice. The NG is nice and light and special goes from light to dark. It shades its way straight through. It's beautiful. The extra fine, its base tone is the same so we do see that very light and because of that I'm going to go ahead and call this the same tone that we're actually getting. The extra fine is no feather spread, halo sheen. It has Great shading, great shading, and this pen is wet enough that it's it stays darker on the lighter areas. So when we look at the, it starts light and it gets dark. We look at brown, starts dark and gets light. Fox is entirely a light word. Jumps goes from light to a mid-tone. Great shading all the way through here, 10 seconds to dry. Medium, we get the same tones with the medium. It has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shade almost no shade. It's just that it's wetter. It's so much wetter. There's spots that have some decent shading, uh, like Fox goes from light to dark, 
but on the majority, a lot of that shade is lost here on this paper. Well, it took 18 seconds to dry. When we look at the scrubby, the extra fine shows a great deal of color variation, which is what we got. The medium shows really none, and we barely got any. And the smear test, although this is a very light ink, I believe you could recover this if you smeared it. Tomoy River. Now, that's not a bleed spot. That's from a page underneath. It has no bleeding. It has, you know, very little ghosting, being a lighter ink. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, and no shade on this paper. As somebody who really enjoys the shading of ink, that's one of the reasons I don't enjoy the Tomoy River as much. It just it eats up some of that shading as the ink gets time to level off before it dries. The Extra Fine has the same tone as we got with the 1.1. The Extra Fine has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, and no shade, 18 seconds to dry. Now the medium gets a little bit darker in its tone. It has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade. It took 33 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both showed us no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. And the smear test, you couldn't recover it if you smeared it. Rhodia. Again, this is me being sloppy. It's not bleed. The Rhodia has no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, great shading. Not as varied a shading as the Clairefontaine, but still really nice shading and really gradual from one side to the other, from the lighter into the darker. Like we see with Oster, starts lighter, gets darker, stays darker. Robert starts darker, gets lighter. So it's very nice stuff here. Zoom out a little bit. There we go. The Extra Fine has the same tones that we see with the 1.1. The Extra Fine has no feather, spread, halo sheen. It has great shading. Again, the shading doesn't jump out as much as we saw with the Clairefontaine. But Quick starts light and gets dark. Brown starts dark and gets light. Fox has a very dark X. So it gets very nice shading in the writing of the Extra Fine. Nine seconds to dry. Medium becomes a very noticeably darker tone. With no feather, spread, halo sheen, and yes, it has great shading. We see spots in jumps where it's nice and light, like an area in the J where it's really nice and light. The B in brown has a light at the bottom and a very light at the top. Gets nice and dark in there. Lazy goes from light to dark in the LA. Gets light in the ZY. The starts light and gets dark. Beautiful stuff here. The shading came through very well with a medium nib and 18 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby of the extra fine shows us plenty of color variation. We did see some color variation up there. The medium doesn't show nearly as much, but if you look far left to far right, you see that there is a bunch of color variation. It's just not as obvious. And we do get all of that in a writing sample. And again, the smear, I believe you could recover this if you smeared it while you were writing. Twisby, Twisby notebooks. No bleeding, really no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo sheen, and no shading here. None whatsoever. The Extra Fine is slightly lighter in tone than we got with the 1.1. It has no feather, spread, halo sheen, and only a few spots of shade. The K, which is normally darker for me, is darker than the rest of Quick. The X, which is normally a dark letter for me, is a little darker than the rest of Fox. Other than that, I'm not seeing a ton of shading here, but there are spots of shading, like the H in the the is a little bit darker than the rest of the. 11 seconds to dry. A noticeably darker tone with the medium. No feather spread, halo sheen, and no shading came through at all on this paper. It took 16 seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine shows a lot more color variation than we actually saw in the writing sample. And the medium shows almost no color variation. We really didn't see it there. The smear test on this paper, I don't think you could recover it. Moleskin. It doesn't do well with a medium nib. It did okay. Just okay with the extra fine. With the extra fine nib, it has spots of bleed, but I don't think in a pocket notebook it would stop you from using it. Don't use the medium because you can't use the back of the page, but it doesn't touch the page underneath. The extra fine doesn't make the back of the page unusable in a pocket notebook sort of sense. It's the writing that makes it unusable. This is the medium. The medium has some spread. It has crazy, ridiculous amounts of feathering all over it. 
no halo sheen or shade. The extra fine has no spread, crazy, ridiculous feathering all over it. With no halo sheen or shade, three seconds to dry. The scrubby showed us no color variation. We didn't see any color variation. And a smear, you'd probably be able to actually recover this if you smeared it while you were writing. So 20 pound copier paper does not do well. Even with the extra fine, it just doesn't do well. It didn't bleed through and touch the page underneath. It didn't bleed through and touch the page underneath with the uh, medium, but there is a significant amount of bleeding into the paper. It just doesn't touch the page underneath. You can't use the back of the paper. The medium up top, it has spread, it has feather, no, sh no uh, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine has spread, it has feather, it has no halo sheen or shade. It took one second to dry. The scrubby showed us no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. But you can't smear this. It dries so fast. And that is all that I have for the writing sample. Instead of finding inks that look like Robert Oster's NG Special, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I've chosen Krishna's Shamrock because it's a very rich green that goes well with this orange. Before I give my opinion on this ink, I would ask, if you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, I would invite you to subscribe. So what do I think of Robert Oster's NG Special? I think the shading that this ink gives most all of the time is really nice. It's something to watch out because if you're using a broad, wet pen, you're going to lose some of that shading ability of this ink. So you might want to use it with a drier pen, maybe even a drier stub, to really bring out some of that shading ability that this ink has. Thanks for watching.